I hadn't given the original Spice Bomb Infrared a fair opportunity, however, this new flanker is truly impressive, so stay tuned. Hey what's going on, Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content so of course you know what to do. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure to follow me over on my Instagram page. But today we are reviewing the newest Spice Bomb release which of course is Infrared EDP. Which is actually a flanker of a flanker so these flankers are absolutely getting crazy. But this one guys is actually a pretty good release from the house of Victor and Rolf. And it's no secret, I'm a huge fan of the original Spice Bomb. I've been wearing that fragrance for probably over five years now and just love it. So of course, we'll go ahead and see if this actually takes Spice Bomb's place as my favorite within this lineup. And come to think of, there's actually so many flankers within the Spice Bomb lineup itself. You of course have the original Spice Bomb, Spice Bomb Extreme. There used to be Spice Bomb O Fresh, which got discontinued. Then they came up with um, Night Vision, then Night Vision EDP, of course, Infrared, and then Infrared EDP. And honestly, I wish they kind of changed up the naming within this line because they should have did Night Vision Extreme and then obviously Infrared Extreme to go along with uh, Spice Bomb Extreme, which is a flanker of the original. I think that sounds a little bit better than ADP and then of course Parfum that is kind of getting old. But anyways, I guess it is a little bit more clear to the public when it comes to the names. So let's go over some information. Now this obviously was launched in 2023. It just came out a few months ago at the time of this recording. As far as the retail price on the size that I have in hand, which is the 90 ml, which is an odd kind of a size, instead of just going with the 100 ml, you are getting 10 less mils of juice, but it is gonna run you $134, which I think is fairly reasonable for a designer release. And for the concentration, of course, it is an eau de parfum concentration, which means it is above an eau de cologne and an eau de toilette, but a little bit less than an extract de parfum, but who knows, maybe Victor and Ralph will come out with an either a parfum flanker or an elixir flanker in the near future. There's actually three noses that went together to create infrared eau de parfum. The first is actually Carlos Benim, John Christopher Herod, and Nicholas Ballou, which are three massive perfumers with a huge resume, so you know some good perfumers went behind this. So with all that information out of the way, let's look at the packaging and presentation you get with this fragrance now. So take a look at the box, which is your traditional Spice Bomb box. Of course, you have the gradient from black to red. On the bottom, you do have your batch code to authenticate your product and see when it was produced. And nothing on the side. On the back, you will find your ingredients as well as a barcode on the back. And then nothing on top besides your VNR badge. But that is the box presentation. Let's look at the bottle now. So take a look at the bottle now, which a lot of people think may be a little bit tacky because it is in the shape of a hand grenade, which I think is pretty cool and makes it unique. Of course, it is in the black glass. And what stands this one apart compared to the original infrared is... This one actually has the red label that goes around instead of black. And that kind of is the theme they're going for with Victor and Ross Spice Bomb Extreme. You have the gold label going around. In the night vision, you have the green label going around, which means it is the Eau de Parfum Flanker. And you do have a red uh, hue on the bottom of the glass. Then on the bottom of the bottle, you do find your batch coat as well. Nothing on the back. And to be able to spray this, you actually have to take off this here, like a hand grenade basically, which is pretty cool. And then you'll be able to press the atomizer because without that, you cannot press this and it won't spray, which is more of a safety concern if you're traveling and stuff so your bottle doesn't spray on its own. So that is the bottle presentation, which I actually enjoy. The top, you have cinnamon, chili pepper, and pink pepper. In the mid, you have chili pepper and leather. And in the base, you have resins and woody notes. And this will be classified as a sweet spicy. So let's spray this and test out these spice bomb atomizers. Not necessarily a, the best atomizer since it's not pressurized, but as you saw your, for yourselves, it does spray quite a bit of juice. So. Let's go ahead and remind myself of the opening of this brand new flanker. So I'll say it right away, guys. This is one of the most spicy Spice Bomb releases to date. Way more spicy than at least the original Spice Bomb, which is a little bit more earthy. This one, though, you get a burst of these red spices right off the bat, which is, of course, coming from the combination of that sweet and spicy cinnamon from the top, which actually kind of reminds me of the beverage Fireball Whiskey, if you've ever drank that before and you smelled it, you will absolutely be reminded of that drink when you spray this on, at least from the initial spray. And of course, that is intertwined with a lively burst of that chili pepper and pink pepper. So you're just getting a burst, like an explosion of spices in the top of Spice Bomb Infrared EDP. 
So if you're a fan of spicy fragrances, this is without a doubt right up your alley, guys. One of the most spicy fragrances I've ever smelled. It almost comes across like it's actually on fire, to be honest with you. I'm not even sure how they did that. It's almost like a 3D fragrance. When you smell this, you almost smell the spice is right in front of you. Almost break a sweat when you spray this on skin. That's how. That's literally how spicy it is. Now, once you start making your way into the mid, you are still gonna get that chili pepper that's listed in the mid as well. But what starts to come in is this understated leather note. Now, it's not like an animalic leather. It's not really like a very dark black leather either. It's more so just a smooth, slightly tumbled leather is how I would describe it. That just works seamlessly along with all those spices. It's just a perfect blend together. As I'm smelling this, it actually reminds me more of a niche fragrance than a designer fragrance. That is how like out there it is and how different it actually smells as well. Doesn't smell like your typical designer that you go to Macy's and pick up and spray it. No, it actually has a lot more characteristics going on and the quality is actually top tier. Now, I've actually always viewed Victor and Rolf as a higher tier designer brand for some odd reason, at least when it comes to their fragrances. I always thought they were a little bit above those other designer brands when it comes to the quality and uniqueness of the fragrances that they create. And they usually always have some great perfumers behind them. Like the original Spice Bomb was created by Olivier Poles, which is beyond one of the best perfumers that we've known of, especially in this generation. Finally, when you make your way into the base of infrared EDP, you are gonna be left with a very warm and spicy foundation with these resinous qualities also, which there's no resins really listed. It just says resins in general. But to me, I'm getting a very warm, slightly earthy amber note in the base, along with, of course, the woods, which is more so like cedar wood is how I would describe it. But yeah, just a very warm, spicy, ambery, woody base that you're going to be left with in this scent profile. Just all in all, a fantastic fragrance from the top, mid, and base. Obviously, that burst of cinnamon and red spices in the top, that dries down to a leather along with some spices. And then in the base, you're left with a very warm, ambery, woody base that is just so perfect all together from top, mid, and base. The only thing that is missing from this release that I would have liked included is, of course, tobacco, which the original is known for. I love the tobacco in the OG Spice Bomb. And that's why I probably still prefer the original over this one once I started to wear it more and tested it. But at first, when I, the first time I wore this and spread it on, I was like, wow, this might be the one to take the original spot. But yeah, I changed my mind on that, guys. I still prefer the original OG Spice Bomb. And I even preferred that over the Extreme, surprisingly, as well. I know a lot of people love Extreme, but there's just something that is just so hard to beat when it comes to the original. But still, this is a fantastic spicy fragrance to have alongside the original, of course. It's not redundant or anything like that. It's a completely different fragrance, goes in a completely different route, and is far more spicy as well. Now for the best seasons to wear infrared EDP, Obviously, this is going to be targeted for the cold weather. Absolutely not a warm weather fragrance. Stay away from the spring and summer. This stuff will be way too cloying on skin and people may get sick of it as well as yourself also. But stick to the fall and winter primarily and it's going to be perfect. And actually, I just recently did my top 10 fall fragrances for 2023 and this actually made the list. So of course, I love this one and I'm gonna be wearing it a ton in these upcoming months like the fall and winter. Now for the best occasions, honestly, I think this one suits a more casual setting. If you're just wearing a hoodie like this, a crew neck, something along those lines, if you're going out with friends, but it can also work for a date night as well because it does have this very seductive, sexy, masculine nature about it that is perfect for a date situation but not necessarily like going to work in an office, going to a wedding, somewhere you have to wear like a suit or a tuxedo or even a dress shirt. It does not suit that guys, a very casual yet seductive fragrance. Also more suited for the evening times rather than the daytime. For gender and age groups, this is without a doubt a masculine leaning fragrance. There's nothing feminine about this by any means. Very, very masculine from all the spices, the leather, the woody notes, the resins. Yeah, without a doubt masculine. Now. For age groups though, this is where I think it does lean slightly more youthful because it does come across sweet, it comes across spicy, but it's not really a mature leaning fragrance. In my head, I picture anybody 30 and below rocking this one the absolute best, which is my category as well. And if you are 30 and up, of course you can still wear this one. You can wear whatever you want, whenever you want, which I keep preaching to you guys. But of course, I'm painting you guys a picture in these reviews, what I think these fragrances suit the best and it's absolutely a youthful targeted fragrance. 
I would actually go ahead and say the original Spice Bomb and even Spice Bomb Extreme is more mature than this one because those ones aren't as sweet and they had the earthy tobacco in them as well. So yeah, this is one of the most youthful Spice Bombs to date. Now for the performance, of course, with a flanker like an Eau de Parfum, you're gonna expect this one to perform better than at least the original, which I haven't tested the original so, so much. I have worn it maybe one time and just kind of forgot about it, to be honest with you, because it was a forgettable fragrance in my opinion. Some of you guys might love that one. It was more like a fruity take on this one, to be honest. This one is much more dense, much more spicy. That one's a little bit more airy and fruity. However, I did get above average performance from the EDP flanker. I got over eight hours of pretty good longevity, but not so, so much over eight hours. It was a slightly above the average mark when it comes to longevity. For projection, it did project off of skin very nicely for around an hour and a half up to that two hour mark. And that is very good for an Eau de Parfum. I will let you know though, the original infrared EDT actually projected more than this one because most of the time when you have like an Eau de Cologne or an Eau de Toilette compared to an Eau de Parfum or Extract de Parfum, they do tend to project a little bit more because at the end of the day, what makes the fragrance project is the alcohol concentration. So the lower concentration of perfume, you get more alcohol concentration compared to something like this. So still gonna project, people will notice you and this one does last a lot longer than the original EDT. So I think this is a good flanker when it comes to an Eau de Parfum flanker. It's not identical in scent profile. It does go a different route, but it is definitely more dense and wears like it. Granted, I haven't gotten to wear this one in the very cold winter months and see how it performs once it like drops below 30 degrees outside because of course it hasn't been winter yet since this came out. But from how it wears on like fall evenings, chilly brisk evenings like that, I can definitely see this one performing and pushing through the cold winters. So no complaints when it comes to the performance, a true Eau de Parfum flanker and how it should be. So. That's gonna do it for my review of the brand new infrared EDP. Let me know down below if you got the chance to try the original infrared or even the EDP. And what are your thoughts on this line of fragrances? I'm very curious and interested about that. And also leave a comment down below your favorite from the Spice Bomb lineup. I'm also interested about that too, because mine isn't necessarily everybody else's opinion since I love the OG and nothing can replace that as of yet. But besides that, leave a like on the video, subscribe below if you haven't already. And of course, I'll catch all of you back here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.